Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I know uh, all of you have been hearing about ONDC since the morning. Uh, my colleague Nitin Nair spoke about it in the last session as well. But I think I'll take a step back uh, in terms of broadly understanding what are we trying to do at large, right? So I think uh, people spoke about open networks, uh, Beckon protocol, uh, you know, a lot of other stuff that's been spoken about. I think the idea is to take a step back and just talk in terms of the larger vision that we all have and, and what are we focusing on. So I think that's what I'm going to talk about in the next seven to eight minutes. Yeah. So I think uh, if you look at the Indian economy, the digital economy, uh, it's grown 2.5 times faster than the overall Indian economy in the last six years. Right? I think that's, and there are some numbers which talk about themselves. If we talk about the adoption, uh, you have 840 million internet users in 2022, right? If we talk about smartphone penetration, it's again sort of, you know, grown 2x in the last uh, six years. Consumption has increased drastically uh, from a data standpoint, from the screen time each one of us has spent. And obviously, the, the COVID uh, pandemic obviously sort of had a, was an outlier in this particular statistics at least, yeah. Uh, the financial activity, I think Nandan spoke about uh, UPI transactions today morning, Pramod spoke about it. I think we're seeing a lot of financial activity happening out there as well. While all this is happening, in our view, there are five defining trends that will continue to drive this growth momentum, right? First is obviously the emergence of digital public infrastructure. I think most of the speakers before me have spoken about what's happening in this space, right? So I'll, I'll not touch upon that. Evolution of connectivity driven by 5G is going to be the next big game changer uh, as what we see. Today, if I look at it, just two to three percent of e-commerce is social commerce, right? And if I look at something like China, you have almost 20, 30 percent of e-commerce that's happening through social commerce, right? In our view, there's going to be a fixed 15x explosion by 2030 in terms of social commerce in India. And the core foundation to that would be the evolution of 5G. Even if I look at the private sector investment, uh, it's, it's growing rapidly. There's been a 5x growth from 2016 to 2022 in terms of the investments that have been put in by the VCs and the private equity firms. That's, that's huge, right? That's a five times sort of a scale up. Rise of vernacular platforms is going to drive the next wave of adoption. I think personally, this is the big bet for me. If I look at it today, 95% of online content in India is consumed in vernacular languages, right? 95% plus of content is consumed in vernacular languages. Yes, that's right. But less than 10% of Indians shop today in vernacular languages. That's the big gap, right? That's a big, big gap which needs to be looked into. And obviously, democratization of data to empower consumer. I think some of the speakers before me spoke about the DEPA framework, the account aggregator, the OKEN. That's all here to stay. If I look at it from an excess perspective, and again, this, this, is, this is where the potential lies to really, right? If I look at some of these numbers, you have 800 million people who access internet in India, and only 190 million people undertake digital commerce. And if I look at a country like China, 850 million people, which is what the number of people access internet in India, undertake digital commerce, right? So that's the sort of potential which, which we need to unlock. And I think that's what we're talking about from a ONDC standpoint. Now, even if I look at uh, the MSMEs part of it, right? I think that's the segment which drives the adoption from a supply standpoint. There's not much happening yet in India. If I look at it, only five to 6% of MSMEs are today transacting online or selling online. That's a big barrier which needs to be looked into in terms of how do we unlock the barriers in that space. And the two big things that's out, out there which need to be solved for, one is cost of digitizing inventory, a significant cost which small MSMEs cannot afford. How do we unlock that barrier? And the second is providing a level playing field for them to be discoverable online. Today, the only options most MSMEs have is to go through either a marketplace or maybe a D2C model, right, which is very expensive from an from outreach perspective. 
So that's where ONDC comes in, right? Uh, the vision is a first of its kind initiative globally to reimagine digital commerce and create an open, inclusive, and fair market competitive ecosystem. That's what we're focusing on, that's what we set up for. And I think my colleague Nitin spoke about some of the objectives, so I'm gonna sort of, you know, skip them because I'll be sort of taking out a lot of time on that. So I think this is a diagram which you would have seen, but I think this is again critical to understand in terms of the building blocks, right? The moment you make systems interoperable, you decentralize and you unbundle, this is what it looks like. What we're trying to create is a high trust, low cost DPI. That's what we're focusing on, which drives innovation, inclusion, and fair competition at scale, and obviously is participatory from a governance standpoint. Right? What it does is, on the consumer side, it basically transfers the local market-like experience to digital ecosystem. That's what it brings on the consumer side. And on the supply side, it basically unbundles the entire credit system from the supply chain system. And I think that's where, today what happens is, one of the biggest restrictions in offline businesses moving online is this amalgamation of credit and supply chain. The moment you unbundle the financing part of it from the supply chain part of it, magic happens. I think that's what we're sort of trying to uh, look at. So if I look at it from a use case perspective, I think there are approximately, I mean, there are several, there are many, but nine major use cases which a network like ONDC can un unfold, right? Uh, I think some of the speakers in the morning have spoken about it, so I'm not going to spend too much time around B2B, MSME, boost to DC, D2C. I think maybe what I'll focus on is one of them, which is increased visibility and efficiency in logistics. I think that's what I'll spend some time on. So if you look at Indian logistics industry, and I think I'm taking this as a use case, uh, it's, it's fast growing. It's almost $200 billion worth of industry. But there is very low digitization and interoperability today. Less than 2% of this logistics is digitized in a $200 billion economy from a logistics standpoint, only less than 2% is digitized today. Digitization is a potential cost reduction. Today, almost 20% of the GDP of the country goes in logistics, right? We feel ONDC can unlock this barrier and bring it down drastically from, from an overall percentage perspective. And if I look at the last one, warehousing offers the highest potential. It's very fragmented, fragmented, right? I think that's where we can sort of unify the entire warehousing industry as an example in terms of what, what uh, you know, value can ONDC offer. And obviously, last mile logistics comprises 16% of the overall delivery cost. How can you really improve that is what's what we're focusing on. So I think it's about the art of possible, right? And again, if I just focus on logistics as a segment, it's about how can you enable multimodal, even in case of logistics. I think my friends uh, in the prior session spoke about multimodal transportation. How can we enable multimodal logistics as an example? I think that's where the art of possible comes in, in terms of last mile, first mile volumes, resulting in cost advantages due to scale. Uh, shorten payment cycles with help of digitized proof of delivery. Think of it, how powerful the last one can be if you can shorten the payment cycles and enhance the working capital for, for each of the logistics businesses. Because you have a digital proof of delivery as against a physical proof of delivery in the entire value chain. So yeah, I think uh, Nitin spoke about it. This is where the network is today in terms of the consumer apps, we have six logistics providers already on the network. Dunzo, Loadshare, Grab, ShipRocket, Delivery, eCart. And I think uh, if some of you just were following the recent press, Amazon is trying to get its Amazon transportation on the network soon. So that's gonna be a big addition to the, to the network as well. And obviously we have over 20 seller applications on the network. So again, I think from a cross-border perspective, I think this is again an important one, you know, how can ODC global scale cross-border? And I think uh, we're talking about the discoverability and integration of MSMEs at a global value chain. 
What we are also working on is, uh, is a network-wide badging system which provides assurance on the quality of the services provided by the MSMEs. But that's a very powerful tool, especially in the global trade. We're looking at MSMEs who want, and as a, as a buyer, I want an assurance of quality, right? What we're working on is a network-wide reputation or a badging layer which can give each of the participants of the network a badge. Uh, think of it like a credit score equivalent, right? Where you have a badge which says, okay, how good or how bad I am. I think that's going to be, again, a very powerful tool which, which we can look at. And again, uh, this is applicable both for developed and developing. It's not about, let's understand the problems we're solving for, especially in this space, it's not just a developing country niche problem. It's a, it's a global problem which we're looking at to solve. And to close this out, uh, I think from an implications of open networks for sustainable development, right? Uh, I think we can create a more inclusive, equitable cities, societies, and economies. I think that's what we're focusing on. Uh, we are reimagining re business in the digital arena. I think that's, that's what the focus is. Consumer product ecosystems collapsing of predefined silos. Each one of us is very, is very tuned to this platform way of working. I think it's time to move from platforms to networks, right? And obviously, it's cooperation versus competition, right? Uh, Vimal and team are doing a great job in, in case of Namayatri. And we have a bunch of auto associations which have come together to, to form this Namayatri project, right? So it's about cooperation, then competition. Yeah, I think uh, that's it for my side. Thank you so much for hearing me out. Thank you. So uh, I have one question. Actually, this is uh, quite interesting, the number you told me. They said that there's only 5 to 6% of MSMEs are currently leveraging. What is that 5 to 6 percent? It's of 90 million, right? Some, something around that line? Yeah. So, um, and with, I mean, although we talk about 175 percent growth in e commerce in the last five years, this is across everything, of course. This is a fintech, edtech, online, you know, e commerce and everything that has happened. So, what do you think is, should be in your foresight? What do you think is, should be the growth that, as in India, not necessarily ONDC or anything? Uh, what percentage should we see in next five years? Five or six going to 50, or five or six going to 30? What is the potential? So in fact, uh, we just concluded a study with McKinsey to understand and evaluate the potential that uh, a network like ONDC could provide uh, from a long-term perspective. The very initial benchmarks that they've come up with is saying that a network like ONDC could add at least $80 billion to, to digital commerce uh, by 2030. So I think that's sort of potential we're talking about. So yeah, it's, it's still day zero for us. Uh, I mean, it's what, just 18 months that we have been uh, uh, out here. But yeah, it's, it's a long journey for us. But yeah, that's the sort of potential we're talking about. Ah. All right, so thank you. I mean, I think uh, this is a great way to finish. Thank you for, for, thank you for joining us, yeah. So that's a, that's a great way to finish. Um, that was billions, by the way, he just talked about, not millions, just in case you got the number wrong. Um, so this is, uh, this is a fabulous opportunity.